Okay, so this demo is going to talk about environment design. So with environment design, it's there can be a bit of a long process to it, and it can kind of depend on the needs of your project. So this particular project, and this particular example, is just going to be how I've been tackling the layout for my original project, Fate Saga. Now this project is already in progress and there are already some background elements done. So this is a little bit, uh, these, this particular draft is a little bit later in the production process. Uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've been doing for this project to help give you guys some inspiration for what might be helpful for yours. Now, just because I do certain things doesn't mean you have to do them the same way. Use this as help as much as it is helpful to you. So uh, with my original project, Fate Saga, I knew that I wanted this story to take place in kind of a medieval-ish world that's kind of like uh, Europe, like a medieval Europe. But it is meant to be an original world, so yes, uh, influenced, inspired by, but not necessarily that place specifically. So uh, what I had done originally for this was um, I had gone through and made storyboards for the episode itself, and I just tried to make it look like a rough, small village. And I did look up Bavarian architecture like long, long time ago. Um, as like a rough idea and years ago I went to Europe and looked at Belgium and I went to London. I was not for this project specifically, I was visiting a friend, but took a lot of pictures and just kind of tried to pick up a little bit of inspiration while I was there. So her town ends up being kind of a, a inspired by like passive research um, that I'd done those last few years and many years ago. Uh, back around 2010, I tried an earlier draft of the same project concept, and there was a bit more time spent researching then, and I think um, uh, a little bit more research spent in Bavarian architecture. And although the earlier version of the story from back in 2010 is uh, quite different than than this story is now, the story had gone through a lot of evolution. Uh, the fact of the design of the town or his general idea of what the architecture would look like, uh, didn't change an awful lot, even though the location did change. So uh, that's kind of how the buildings came to be what they were. Uh, it's just inspired by Bavarian architecture. And um, this particular story takes place in a town that is uh, small, rather poor, and gets ravaged by earthquakes, but did not originally get ravaged. So... Uh, this was not a place that's used to dealing with tons of earthquakes, like maybe the occasional one. Uh, I kind of equate it to a little bit to California, where California gets earthquakes, although I don't know if historically California dealt with earthquakes, you know, the same in all of its past between you know, the earliest times of there that we know of and now. I, I don't know about that. And this place is in California specifically, just uh, it's a place that deals with a lot of, uh, deals with the occasional earthquake and has a, a similar sort of coastal climate uh, or sort of coastal climate. Uh, but this place has been dealing with a lot more earthquakes recently. So they're not able, this town is not really able to keep up with the level of destruction that the earthquakes cause. Uh, so that's kind of the backstory of this town. So, um, there are some locations that have already been designed. Um, the general look of the town, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, had you know, some ideas behind it. This place has been a little roughed up. And um, after making the storyboards, went through and made a map of what the place could be like. And now the map, after making the map, uh, I do need to go through and adjust a little bit of the animatic to make sure that everything is consistently in place. So I went through the storyboards to make sure the story makes sense, and I tried to keep in mind the physical location, but was kind of rough about it. Uh, there is a draft to be made of the animatic where we go much more tightly through the map and make sure that you know, the characters are going in a location that makes sense. So I'm going to pull up an image of the map. 
is Okay, so here's a sort of an earlier, uh, not an earlier draft of the map. Here's a draft of the map that has um, some writing on it. Uh, but this is the overall map. Uh, this is where the story starts to take place. Uh, she goes this way. Um, some events happen here. And then the second scene, she's going to go this way. Uh, and then the third scene, she heads in here into the crystalline. Um, then it goes down here, and then she ends up going back back this way. So this is roughly the area that we're going to end up seeing the most as of right now. Uh, not to say that any of this can't change. So we made the map uh, after a draft of the storyboards because we need to know, okay, where do the characters even need to go? And then marking out, okay, where, what was the overall layout of this town? Um, then, as I mentioned before, I do need to go back into the animatic and make sure that it all, uh, camera perspective and where the characters are going all make sense. Uh, I think for the most part it does. I think there's going to be a little bit of shakiness right here in the second scene. Uh, but we're, I'm going to try to adjust in the animatic and we'll go back and forth as needed. So that was another stage, is an overhead view. Uh, again, whether that's something you need to do for your project or not kind of depends. Is it something that you, is your character traveling a distance where we need to keep track of where they are at all times, or it could get confusing, or we could lose sense of placement with the character? Um, I've been involved in a couple projects that have used maps uh, to help, especially like if they're going through a cave and they're going to come in and out of the same locations, or maybe somebody's house, uh, and you're going through the different rooms and you just want to make sure you keep in mind like oh where's the appliances or oh where is the couch where are the couches you know suddenly the living room changes uh, the arrangement of the furniture a few times during the project for no reason and you're going to confuse your audience uh, so that helped out with this so here's a uh, draft of the map and then um, one thing we've been doing too is creating 3d models so <clears throat> we went ahead with a different, one of the locations that's much later in the project. Uh, there's a point in the story where she goes to a place that she works at. Let me find it. Yeah, the, <clears throat> the crystalline, which is kind of basic looking in here in these sketches. I try not to get too detailed with the buildings because, again, I wasn't even sure what they were going to look like 100% yet. I had like a really, really rough idea. Um, but, so she goes to this location, and this is a location where uh, a lot of action takes place. So we made a, we chose for this one to be the first location that is done in 3D. And the whole background is being done in 3D, uh, mostly to make it easy to do the painting, uh, the matte painting. So the final rendering is going to be a matte painting on top of 3D. So it's not going to be just 3D graphics because that can be a little hard to pull off the 2D characters. It's possible, but I have not yet really been able to get that to work. Uh, so uh, the angle that we're going with for this project is uh, rendering it in 3D or modeling it in 3D in sort of a pseudo simplistic way so that we can lay out all of the assets together and then paint on top of it. And by simplistic way, I just mean that we're not layering uh, very detailed textures and putting in tons of lights or anything like that. So here is a picture of the crystalline's experience. So that's the location. That's this location. It's the crystalline. So in the animatic, you can see that it's got a sign up there. It's just basic, though. It's just crystalline. And then uh, later on, we were figuring out what the crystalline could actually look like. We're talking about how. This is a place, this whole town is a place that's been ravaged by earthquakes. So uh, the sign, maybe he didn't survive hanging as it does. So we have it laying against the side of the building. So that's why it's like that. So, uh, so far, this is the only fully rendered 3D building as of right now. Although the, the uh, town itself is in progress and has uh, kind of rough out, roughed out shapes and uh, roofs. I'm probably not going to do tight 3D rendering of any of the buildings that are not important because that's a lot of time spent. 
in an area where there may not be much payoff. So we're spending the most time 3D rendering or, or doing more detailed 3D models of buildings where you see them up close or you interact with them in some way. So this one was a really important building because she's going to be interacting with it and going in and out and uh, things happen in this, in this building. Uh, a lot of action here. So another place that needs to be designed, and I'm actually in this stage now, very early on, is Larkspur's Church, which you never see the inside of it as of right now, um, but we do see it as a detailed building, and I want it to be a building that stands out, or at least one that's recognizable uh, from the other buildings. So uh, that's how this is a rough version I have of it at the moment. So there was a bit of research and time spent figuring out what her religion is like. Now, religion doesn't come, uh, doesn't really come up in this episode that much other than the fact that she is a cleric, but Larkspur comes across more like a, like a nurse or a doctor is she doesn't really talk much about religion, not really in this episode. And, but I wanted to figure out what her what the details of her religion were, and I've had a rough idea, but um, I don't have a great uh, condensed history of of different religions in, in my education. So I'm a little bit limited in how much I can really think about it in a helpful way. And yes, that, that a lot of time could be spent doing the research. But sometimes it can be more helpful to get help from people who have a lot more experience in something than you do. We can't be good at everything or we can't know everything uh, or know the nuances of it. So uh, I brought in a very close colleague of mine who has a lot of experience with, and has done, um, has taken courses and knows a lot about very different religions. And uh, she has not to be meant it led to be a uh, label by name here. So I'm gonna leave her name out, but a great colleague of mine, uh, she was fantastic. And she helped me with uh, researching and helping to figure out some of the details of Larkspur's religion is um, one thing that I knew I wanted to sort of do, but also want to avoid was uh, I, Larkspur's religion is sort of roughly inspired by uh, Christianity, but I didn't want it to be Christianity. Like, I don't, she is not Christian. Her world does not have that kind of religion. I don't want to bring in uh, that kind of history in a world that doesn't really have it. Um, it would not be well represented and it wouldn't really make sense. So I wanted to see what details were appropriate to have on a church and which ones might have a connotation that's not intended. So for example, I'm going to be leaving out any kind of crosses, no crosses in any of these designs because that has a very uh, particular tie to Christianity and that wouldn't really make sense in Fate Saga's history. So uh, one thing that my colleague researched was stained glass. That was certainly something that uh, I was curious about, but I wasn't sure if there was a strict religious tie-in to you know a, a religion on Earth that I, I needed to be I needed to avoid or be very cautious of. Uh, we found that. It, stained glass t uh, tends to be used to tell a story, but isn't particularly attached with any one religion where it, in, using stained glass at all is immediately going to be reflective of that religion. So that's cool. That's very interesting and uh, makes me very excited because that was something I wanted to use with stained glass. So um, I am going to incorporate that in the design of her church. And... Uh, another thing is the shape of the building. So Larkspur's town is very poor. So I want to make sure that it's a very simple church. Uh, there's also going to be an important building that she's going to walk by later that I currently still don't even know what it's going to look like yet. It's just a building. <laughs> it's a building that um, uh, is going to have something fall from it. So I have to keep that in mind that there's this other building to design and I'm just not sure what it's going to look like yet. So we do have some really neat stuff here, like the clock, like this little clock tower. Uh, I'm going to leave that out because for all I know, maybe I can incorporate this into whatever that other building is going to be, uh, the other important landmark building. Uh, so I'm going to maybe go with something like this, uh, but without the attachment. Uh, this one's also nice too. I like both of these a lot. So... Let's get sketching. Um, 
And funny enough, the shape I have in here is kind of similar. Well, kind of similar to either of these, really. Okay. Okay. I wish I knew what these looked at from uh, looked like from a side view. Okay, so both are pointy at the top, so I'll keep that. Also like the circular, circular shape. A um, little more. I don't know which one I like better. Well, this one has a little plus shape, which could be like a cross. So I may want to be careful about that. Um, that one kind of looks like a flower. Hmm. I wonder if I went with more because uh, Auburndale, Auburndale tends to have a lot of squarish shapes in the buildings. Maybe that's something I could consider here. Uh. I like the idea, but that wasn't the best drawn shape. Uh, let's see. Doesn't really leave much room for oil. Maybe if I make this a little thinner. If I do it at the corner. Okay. They both have a protrusion, although this one looks like it's got, the one on the bottom looks like it's got a little bit more of a protrusion. make this building a little bit <laughs> have, have a little more depth okay now um, signs of the places in Auburndale are a little well that's the are a little boxy and pointy. So I should maybe include details like that. Let's bring this out a little bit. Something they gotta think about. This is a poor town, so they're not gonna have the most elaborate looking church, but it's also an old town. So it could have been fancier at one point, which is something I've considered. But we're also not here that long. So I want to imply some history, but not really get overly wild with the decor, maybe just keep it kind of poor. Oh, I kind of like the little stained glass top that one has. Just really 
that. I wonder if making it less of a circle and more of What I'm going to do is a couple of rough sketches of what this this building could look like. I'm not going to design the inside because uh, as of right now I don't really plan on going inside of it. So there's little windows just hanging around. Now the crystalline has very squared windows. Very, very squared windows. Uh, makes me wonder if it's better for this place to also have squared windows, but yeah, I'm not sure. Well, it does have pointy, well, it has no pointy windows, crystalline, but it does have some pointy tops. Okay, so I guess there's draft one. I'll be the first to admit, I am not the greatest at drawing buildings. That does not look like a building. I don't know what that looks like. An arrow. And that's why if there's something that you're kind of lousy at because it's hard to be good at everything um, and even if you are really good at everything which is awesome if you are that is so cool um, but there's also the matter of trying to find the time to do any to do all of this so it can help to work with other people like maybe bartering your skills for their skills so um so like i'm pretty good with the technical side and um and character animation pretty pretty decent at uh so that is usually the thing that i will barter offer um so my technical skills or animation skills in return for, oh gosh, it's lousy, uh, for background, music, uh, voice acting, and then also um, when you have the, eventually if you have funding, you can hire people. That's what I've done for this project too. Is uh, I've hired some of my colleagues for it. Um, and I do have, thankfully, <laughs> good background artists who can do this uh, do this a bit better. But uh, I still got to figure out what the church is even going to look like before I go. And I could hire, uh, bring my colleague in to figure out the designs. Um, but I'm kind of got a rough idea of what I'm looking for. So I figured that's something that I just got to figure out myself. And then bring her in to make to make it look make it look nice. Oh 
นะโอเค Now I've played with the idea, and we've been playing with the idea that Larkspur's religion is tied to dragons. So what if the and this is actually going to be more important when um, we have the other building has something that almost falls on Larkspur, and we may need that to be uh, well. I guess it could be anything. Something we playing around with is it being a dragon or, or a, uh, a statue like a gargoyle statue but I would want it to make sense like I don't want it to just be this random article that just falls it's like well you can tell this exists solely for the purpose of being a plot device I'd like to try to avoid that if possible so I want to make sure that whatever falls on her either makes sense for just being on a building or that it makes sense like If it's say like a gargoyle statue, there's a reason for it to be there. It's not just there, you know, screaming, falling plot device. So I've been playing with the idea that instead of it being a gargoyle statue, it might be a dragon statue. Um, Okay. Yeah, maybe another little. Kind of like that shape. I don't know if I'll just go with it. This is like a honeycomb up here. I like that shape. I don't know if I like anything else about this building, but uh, I think I like this front better. This part better, but this shape. Okay. Let's just try a front view. I didn't even put any in any. Well, I mean, there's two there, but. Um, well, there's the arches, so. Look close to the roof.
Mira, mira. A ver. I don't know if I'm going to keep that shape, but yeah, it's awesome. Actually, let's try. Inverted. That'll match the crystalline, although again, that's a completely different building and that may not that may not be necessary for them to match. That's just not. No, I'm not. I don't like it. it doesn't really look like a, a church. Okay, what about? I think that requires it to be part of a larger building.
Okay, maybe. Extend that part out a little bit. a little closer. I'm trying to get a dragon that looks a little less like Trogtor. And I like this idea. I don't know if I like this composition. Let's make it smaller. Maybe it being a three-quarter view doesn't work out so well. That's true.
Okay. I don't know if that'll look good, but it's basically dragon, wings, hands, kind of arm and hands, arm and hands, and then feet, hands and feet, or leg and feet. I totally drew it tilted, as one does. There we go. Okay. Actually, I kind of like that one. It looks a little less uh, obvious. It looks a little bit more like a window painting, I think. Uh, yeah, I think I like that one the best so far. Okay, so here's a draft of um, what some what the churches could look like. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and send it out to some of my colleagues and get their feedback um, because this is not a, a client project. This is my own project, so I don't need to get client approval. But uh, this is a project that I am taking seriously and would like to uh, try to make the best decisions with and. So, I'm going to send this out for uh, for feedback from my colleagues, and then probably revisit it, visit a draft based on their feedback. And uh, so, this is the kind of a, a look into the process of um, what you could do when creating in backgrounds or figuring out your environments for your own original projects. And uh, feel free to use any of the advice as much as is helpful to you.